there's merit in just being with your own thoughts for an extended period of time. Or in some cases with no thoughts, and just letting it kind of glaze over for a bit. These are the moments I've cherished for a chance to just decompress. I can say it's probably no better time than now to spend a little time doing just that. Morning. Wow, it has been a minute since I've said that. I guess more accurately, probably about a year and a half. I had had these grand ambitions of increasing the frequency of my videos. But between the dog, a new job that necessitated moving to a new city, as well as a whole lot of travel, then 2020 hit. Well, best laid plans. But this isn't that story. Rather, this is a view, a little bit back to my roots, of my most recent solo backpacking adventure into Algon Algonquin Provincial Park. Let me take you along for the ride. So now Algonquin is about three hours north of Toronto. And I was hitting the Western Uplands Backpacking Trail, which is a loop trail divided into three options, an inner loop, a middle loop, and an outer loop. I did this second loop because, well, I'm not quite in hiking form, so long mile days really didn't appeal. First day I ended up going to Maggie's Lake, which was about 11 miles. Second day I moved up to Pincer Lake North, which was probably about the same. A lot of top up and downs for that day. Third day over to West Outer Paw Lake, more of a shorter day because of the necessity of booking camps and availability. And then finally on the last day, I ended up hiking out about 18 miles. I had originally planned on stopping at Ramona Lake, but plans change. Started off early though. Not bad, on the road before six. It's gonna be a long drive. The actual trail of the Western Uplands hiking trail was interesting. 
at parts it was soft little cushions under your feet from years of pine needles hitting the forest floor and settling there. Other parts it was just a bog where you're trying to pick your way through constant mud. Every step needed to be purposeful lest you get mired in it. Which in some ways I guess is a fitting allegory for much of this year. I enjoyed it though. Technically it was challenging. There were lots of ups and downs, albeit valleys versus mountains but it kept you on your toes. It grabbed your attention and didn't let go. Part of this trip was just to escape and I was truly disconnected, engrossed in my surroundings. There was something about water that has always captivated me. And I find myself constantly gravitating towards whether it's waves crashing on a shore, a surface smooth as glass, or perhaps enshrouded by a mist. I can sit there and just stare out for hours, engrossed in the scenery, my problems just ebbing off my shoulders. The one thing about Algonquin, while it may not have those epic mountains with glorious views at the top, it does have water and spades. Something I took every opportunity to avail myself of. But you can't just stare at water all the time. You also have to eat. Interestingly, as I prepared for this trip, I started searching out those backpacking meals at your typical outdoor stores. Everything has been sold out though for months due to the pandemic. Whether people were stocking up, worrying that there'd be a run on the supermarkets, or perhaps everybody's just hitting the wilderness, I don't know. But I was left to Idaho mashed potatoes, ramen noodles, and north side dishes. Adding a little bit of tuna here and there for good measure. End of day, it's all about the calories, so it's all good. That is, of course, as long as I have my coffee.
searching for glory I took out an old pen And wrote in my story Then I kept walking on So I'm wrapping up dinner here on my third night out in the lovely Algonquin. If you just take a moment and listen, you're struck by just how silent it is. Maybe a bird chirping in the background, but really is no noise. It got me thinking about the number of people that have asked me when I tell them I'm coming out. The first question is always, are you doing it alone? Kind of the uh, point of a solo backcountry backpacking trip. But unless you've really done it, I don't think you can appreciate the difference of being alone and being lonely. I can tell you on all the trips I've done, I can probably count the number of times on one hand where I actually felt lonely. There's been times I've been scared and I wish somebody was around. There's been times where I see a, a particularly picturesque scene, perhaps a deer in the background. I do want to share that with someone. But never lonely. So the last day was, well, tough. I'm not going to wax poetic or present any illusions of overt romanticism. It was a hard day. Pragmatically, one of the hardest I've had in a while. But maybe that's part of the appeal. You know when you do something difficult, you've earned that moment. This one was particularly tough because, well, the trail was floppy but I was also doubling up the miles. I originally was going to spend one more night and then hike out the following day. But the previous night, this massive storm blew through around three o'clock in the morning. I had originally set up my hammock in porch mode. 
just as I was contemplating bringing it down to storm mode, this massive gust of wind caught the edge of my tarp, blew the tent peg out of the ground, blew my hiking pole off its perch, and ended up actually slicing this big rip in my tarp. So here I am, pitch dark in my sleep clothes, trying to duct tape a rip. As I'm getting soaked, my sleeping bag is getting soaked. Needless to say, I didn't have a great rest of the night's sleep. And since the next day was dreary, I decided not to try and dry things out, but rather just push through and hike out. It was a long day, but rewarding. Until next time, hike on.